Thanks for joining us after another busy week, especially in the upcoming Memphis City election, which is now less than two weeks away. I have a great panel assembled to talk about all the new developments, but first, let's show you what's on the menu for today. September surprise. Nine Shelby County Corrections officers indicted this week in connection with the death of inmate Gershon Freeman. Their boss, the sheriff, who's a front runner in the Memphis mayor's race as well, says they did nothing wrong and calls the indictments politically motivated. A lot to unpack there, and we will. We'll also talk about other developments in the Memphis mayor's race this week. One candidate comes out slinging with not one but two negative ads against his opponents, while another continues to fly under the radar with his unconventional campaign. Is that strategy working? And stadium squeeze. Tennessee Republicans put more pressure on Mayor Jim Strickland to get a deal done on renovating FedEx Forum and the Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. But where will the money come from? We'll get to all that in a moment. But first, let me introduce that panel I spoke of a moment ago. to Sanford is ABC 24's political analyst. Sam Hardiman is a reporter with the Daily Memphian. And Deidre Malone is a political consultant and founder and CEO of the, Deidre, or of the Carter Malone Group. Thanks all three of you for being here. Uh, Otis, before we get into the political ramifications of, of all of what happened this week with the indictments, let's just talk about the significance that we have nine more uh, corrections officers uh, that have been indicted for a pretty serious crime. Oh, absolutely. It, it, this is a bombshell story, Richard. And this is the second group of law enforcement slash police officers uh, who have been indicted in connection with the murder of a citizen just this year. Uh, and so that cannot be lost on the public. Uh, and this is not a good story, certainly for Sheriff Floyd Bonner. It has put him on the defensive uh, about how the jail is operated uh, and whether his uh, officers are too quick to use excessive force. Um, but on the other hand, uh, you have people who su are supportive of law enforcement, and Bonner said, I support my officers and will even uh, donate to their defense funds. You have people who will say, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, the charges against uh, uh, Gershon Freeman, the inmate, uh, they are not cut and dry. Uh, he had health issues, uh, psychosis, and some other things, and so it's not clear that uh, a jury will find that these officers directly caused his death. So there's a lot to unpack with this uh, criminal story, um, uh, indictments, even beyond uh, the politics of it all. All right, Sam, let's talk about the political side of this. Uh, we have two sound bites I'm going to play for the folks now. One is first uh, with Sheriff Bonner, where he's alleging the indictments are uh, politically motivated. And we believe that is directed towards Steve Mulroy, who backs Van Turner, uh, one of the opponents in the mayor's race. And we'll get Mulroy's uh, response to the sheriff's allegations. I want this community to know that I stand with these officers. I believe that if I were not running for another office, these indictments never would have happened. And I find this despicable. Out of an abundance of caution to make sure there wasn't even the appearance of politics involved, I recused myself from the case. That is not at all uncommon for DAs in Tennessee to do. Okay, so unpack that for us, because a lot of, uh, you know, things going on there. In the comments that were made so today. let's be clear about the timeline of events here. So. Floyd Bonner, the sheriff, appeared as a candidate on Behind the Headlines in which he called the release of Gershon Freeman, the video of that death, illegal, first to start, said political bias. Two hours later, several hours later, he called a preemptive news conference where he, he, called, he announced these indictments and then called them political. So as much as he was on defense there, he was playing an offensive defense. And, and showed up he, in his yeah. uniform, flanked by his command staff behind him. Right. That was and, political too. And yeah. so that, that is all political. At the same time, these indictments came down while people are voting in the Memphis mayoral election. Early voting is underway. If Nashville District Attorney Glenn Funk, Davidson County District Attorney Glenn Funk, wanted to avoid any politics at all in this case, he could have waited to hand down these indictments until after the election was over, right? And so he, I called his office today, didn't get a response. A lot of other media outlets have called his office and asked about the timing of these indictments. Two things can be true. Gershon Freeman could potentially have been murdered. That will have to be proven in court. And the way these indictments were handled can be political. I haven't figured out, though, Glenn Funk, if we can show his picture of the Davidson County DA who uh, got this case because, as Mulroy said, he recused himself. Uh, he said it's just purely happen chance that Funk was the one who was given uh, the case to investigate. Uh, but he has been, because it has been crickets from him and his office, don't you think he owes the public some sort of explanation for what happened? 
Absolutely, he owes the public some explanation, especially the timing is so suspect. I mean, we're in the middle of early voting. You know, you could have done this earlier or you could have done this after the election. Clearly, there's some politics involved. Um, you know, uh, Nashville just finished their mayoral's, mm. mayoral race. And it got pretty ugly there, <laughs> it too. It got really ugly there. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, timing is everything, and definitely it was political. So uh, who do you think benefits, guys, from this, and who may be hurt besides uh, Bonner? We've talked about how he may have been helped or hurt. Wh wh who else? Yeah, are we sure that the sheriff is hurt? If You what? need to be first past the poll here, and his base is law enforcement and those who support law enforcement. You can still be first past the poll. Who, who has helped here? If people are undecided and this is really going to weigh on them, probably helps Paul Young, probably helps Van Turner. That would be my guess. Maybe it Floyd's, if, if it's a Floyd Bonner voter that would have gone to Willie Harrington. That's those. It's probably the top three there. Maybe even J.W. Gibson. I think if you, if anybody looked at the video and they saw how the inmate came out, I mean, the inmate actually attacked the officers, mm -hmm. and so yeah, if you're looking at it, you see that. So I think it may help Floyd because anybody that is wanting somebody that's tough on crime, then Floyd's still going to be their guy. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. he's standing with his officers. Yeah. That's uh, what I think. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think initially it was a bad story for Floyd Bonner. Uh, and as I said earlier, it did put him on the defensive here. Um, but as this story continues to marinate a little bit, uh, I think Deidre is on the money here because, again, this is not a slam dunk uh, prosecution here. Uh, and, you know, the. The, the indictments coming in the middle of early voting, somebody told me uh, the other day, this smacks of the James Comey moment uh, when um, he reopened the investigation of Hillary Clinton back in 2016. Of course, Hillary lost. Um, and I'm not sure that that's going to happen with Bonner. Um, but who benefits from this? Uh, I think Dr. Harrington benefits some here. Uh, and the other major candidates, uh, uh, Paul Young and Van Turner, uh, stand to benefit fit here a little bit more. Well, and, and to the point about the video, it's a 13-minute video. It's a long video. Yes. The beginning of the video, as Deidre described, Gershon Freeman comes out of his cell, okay, and he is at the ankles of the sheriff's office personnel. If you watch the entirety of that 13-minute video, which you can find on YouTube with a quick search. Local 24. That's where I saw it. Th things change quite a bit. Yeah. And, and it, it is open-ended as to whether or not what happened there is a crime, but it gets a lot more less black and less gray and a little more black and white toward the end of that video and the problem is the public's attention span is probably not going to get all the way down that video yeah. yeah okay all right we're gonna take a break we have more to talk about when it comes to the memphis mayor's race a lot more in fact we'll be right back